Welcome, everybody, back to the Fire Talk podcast and YouTube channel. For today's episode, we're going to be talking about Mackenzie Gore, and we're going to be going over whether or not he should stay in the MLB when Blake Snell comes back, if he should get sent down. We're going to go through a couple scenarios, but we want to start talk, starting out by talking about how good he's been this year. So right now he has a 2-4 ERA, five starts into his season, nine walks. I think he has over a strikeout, like a strikeout per inning. Um, so he's... He started out really good, and when you look at all the question marks in the past, I think he's in a really good spot. So, Isaac, how do you feel about McKenzie Gore's performance so far this season? He's been fantastic. I mean, you you look at it from a from just a viewer standpoint, you could definitely see that he's been one of the better pitchers in this rotation, and this whole rotation has been fantastic. But you can see the difference that um, somebody like McKenzie Gore makes in your rotation, where. He's a very, very good pitcher. He was highly touted. He was our number one prospect at one point, fell down to number four. But we all knew like he wasn't actually a number four prospect. He still had all the potential in the world from when he was the number one prospect. So it was more like he was our number two prospect. We had CJ as our number one. But going over some of the stats, um, Mackenzie Gore, you brought up his ERA, very good ERA. Um, expected batting average against him is 260. So these are some advanced stats that I looked up on, on Baseball Savant. Expected batting average 260. Hard hit percentage of 50, which is around league average. 26.4K percentage, which is above average. Uh, he had right now, and ah, this kind of sucks, but it's a 362 expected ERA. Though not bad. It's not bad. It's actually like that's about what I expect from a rookie pitcher. Like it's not, it's it's far from what his actual ERA is, but it's about what I expect from a rookie pitcher. It's a number five, which is what I thought he would start in as start as. That's actually what he is right now, the number five. So that's pretty good. The only thing that's a little concerning is how often he throws his fastball. He throws his fastball 66% of the time. But when you look at it, that's not all that bad because his fastball is proving as one of the best pitches in baseball right now. It has a negative seven run value. So, I mean, it's working for him. It's one of the best pitches in baseball. So I don't know. I'm torn. And then you look at the rest of it, curveball percentage, 14%, slider percentage, 13 and a half change up 6.2 um his worst pitch is the curveball with the it has a 600 batting average against him right now an expected batting average of 427 so um that's really high but of course that's that's going to improve as time goes on as he develops as as one of the best major league pitchers in the league is what i think he's going to be um the, so the question really is where does he stand on this roster where do we think he's going to be is he even going to be on the roster um that is a very very hard question to answer very and as much as you know i want to say yeah he's going to be on this roster to me it's not from a talent standpoint it's from just you you might be the odd man out of the rotation other than nick martinez you and martinez might be the odd man out which is unfortunate because they both been pitching pitching some pretty good baseball nick martinez had two had more rough games than the rest but that was expected nick martinez isn't you know he, he came from japan or wherever he came from and i didn't expect him to be fantastic he's been serviceable very serviceable and I expect him to go to a bullpen roll. So the question is, will Mackenzie Gore go to a bullpen roll, or will he? Who will he piggyback, or what are they going to do? I don't know. <laughs> it's a very tough question to answer because realistically, they could go so many ways. He could piggyback Mike Clevenger because Mike Clevenger, as we're seeing right now, um, he's he's been he's doing good. I think he's doing good. Like, you know, after his second Tommy John, he's doing good. But. He's throwing a lot of pitches in only around four or five innings. Still struggling just a little bit with control. Still struggling to get out of some innings, which is not bad. It's what I expected. Um, then you can have Mackenzie Gore piggyback Mike Clevenger. You could have Nick Martinez piggyback Blake Snell. You could do so many things with both of those guys. Um, and then there's another realistic chance that you send him to AAA. But he doesn't need any more work in AAA. That's the only problem is that you're doing the guy a disservice if you send him to AAA because he doesn't need much more work other than improving his off speed, his off speeds, one of them. Because the second worst off speed is, I believe, the changeup with a 333 batting average, I think it is, which that'll improve also. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. It's a very tough question. If I had to pick, I would have him piggyback Mike Clevenger for a little bit and then you figure it out later because why are you going to send down somebody that's doing really good? It's like, you got to reward good players, good players for good play. Um, so yeah, that would be my choice. Piggyback Mike Clevenger. Um, but I don't know, man, very tough because you want him out there on the mound in the first inning and you know, he has work to do in terms of improvement. So, I mean, where would you want him? 
So first off, I want to talk about just his performance a little bit. I want to bring up, you know, you talk about how much he's throwing his fastball. Um, and you talk about how his curveball hasn't been that good. That's actually one of, supposed to be one of his better pitches. Um, but he's really struggled, struggled to locate his off-speed pitches early. Um, we've seen the curveball kind of all over the place. We've seen the changeup, like, in the dirt a lot, you know. Um, so I, I want to say that I have a feeling that it's going to take some time. He needs to adjust before he's really the guy that we think he is. You brought up that his expected ERA is a 3-6. It's pretty damn good when you consider he's a rookie and he's not landing any of his breaking pitches. I, I guess his, his slider was looking pretty good recently. Didn't you, did you feel like that? I felt like it, it was. It looked a lot better. But, you know, you look at his pitches, you go, okay, this guy has obviously a lot more potential than what he's showing right now, and he's looking good. So my first thought with that, you have to keep him as a starter. But then there's a couple caveat, caveats to it. One, you have way too many guys, right? That's That's the first issue. You have seven starters. Um, I'm going to definitely slate him above Nick Martinez. I don't even think it's close. Um, and that's not like to knock Nick Martinez. I think he's a solid back-end starter. I think he's a solid long reliever. I think him in that role is perfect. I think he's done a really good job as a starter. I know his ERA is not that great. That's what I expect out of a five-starter. I'm not looking for a guy throwing sub three, anything crazy, right? Um, but he, but Mackenzie Gore has been better early on. And he's a lot younger, and he's the guy you want to develop. He's the guy that needs those starting reps. However, sounds like they want him on an innings limit. So that kind of changes everything, in my opinion. Because if he's not in an innings limit, I think you somehow work back him starting games with Clev and uh, Snell. And either they come in after him or they, they piggyback each other, you know, something along those lines. I think, I think you were saying that you wanted to see him after Clev. Like something like that, where you still keep him in that like rotation if he's starting every five days. But if you have 120 innings limit, I think it makes a lot of sense to send him down, have him make adjustments on those off-speed pitches. This doesn't mean that he's going back to the minors to really pitch. It's more like he's just getting a little bit of you know some reps, and then you bring him back, and you either flirt with the six-man rotation, or. You- you have him come back and he's either a starter, whoever's struggling goes to the bullpen, whatever it is, but you have to give him like starter type reps. I don't want to see him in the bullpen in the majors. However, come playoff time, that's different. You, we, I think that some people, I don't, I think if someone on Twitter was talking to me about it and they were like, you know, imagine him in like a Julio Urias type role. That makes perfect sense. That makes complete sense. So I don't want to see, I want to see him get that development as a starter but I understand if he's getting sent down. I just don't want to see him like he's going to go pitch full games in AAA. Like that's just wasting his innings, you know? So I think like maybe like having a couple weeks off and like, cause they did that with Paddock his rookie year. You remember? I think something like that to keep his innings down makes perfect sense, but he needs to be a starter when he's on the MLB roster and he needs to have all or the, the vast majority of his innings pitched in the MLB. So that's kind of where I'm at on him. But what do you think about that kind of idea of like shutting him down a little bit? It sucks to think about because he's didn't been doing so good, but from like, if you're just looking through the lens of, of the team of, of the pottery, their rotation and everything, not as a fan, not as, you know, a Mackenzie Gore fan, not as a, as just not in a fan perspective, you could see why it makes so much sense to send him down for a little bit. Not because he's not doing good, not because he doesn't deserve to stay up, but because, the guy coming in for him, Blake Snell, already has a reputation. Here he's, he was great towards the back end of last year. He's won a Cy Young. Mike Clevenger was fantastic for a long time before he got injured. Joe Musgrove broke out last year. Darvish, obviously, he has his reputation. Manaya got his reputation. It's, um, I mean, everybody's everybody's there. The rotation's set in stone, and it's not like he's the odd man out because he's he's bad. It's just because he's young. He's young, and there's not a spot for him right now. And when the time comes, he'll have that spot for him. Um, just right now, he might have to go to AAA to improve on his – and his curveball, You like you said, it's one of his best pitches. It actually does look like a good curveball. There might just be some – he might just be getting unlucky, whereas his changeup for – you know, it, it does have a 333 batting average against it, but he's striking people out a lot with it. Same with the slider. They're both both of those pitches are very good. It's just his curveball he's struggling with, which we both expect to to improve as time goes on. Um, but 
I want to see him up here. I want to see him in the MLB. He's too good to not be up there, but it's just a matter of this Padres rotation. is, Dude, it's disgusting. It's really good. Um, and that is one of the best problems I can think of as a Padre fan, considering last year we, we went downhill because of the rotation. And in past years, our rotations always sucked. Um, but right now, oh, man, I, I mean – you talked about the playoffs. I really hope we make the playoffs because it's going to be a pick your poison kind of thing. We won't. I feel like set starters won't be a thing. It'll all just be matchup based. Like you can really throw anyone except for Gore and Martinez, whereas Gore, you can have him come out of the bullpen in that Urias role. And I would bet money you would have him come out of the bullpen. Um, but, man, that rotation would be scary in the playoffs, but we got to get there first. And I think. I think to get there first, we just got to rock with our horses and and the guys that we know are going to be out there and dependable. The one thing I'm so afraid of is that Gore stays up and, and falls victim to the weather's, the weather's treatment and something happens and similar to Ryan Weathers where he looks good for the very first few games because, you know, teams aren't familiar with him. They're still trying to gather information on him. And then when it happens, things go wrong. But counterpoints to that. Kenzie's a lot better than Ryan Weathers. He's a lot more highly touted than Ryan Weathers. His pitches are a lot more developed than Ryan Weathers is. And he's older, more mature, and he's been around the league for a lot longer than he has. Not the real league, but you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, man, um, it's such a tough decision. It, it's really hard. I, I can imagine it's going to be a really hard one for Bob Melvin and the Padres to figure out. So I feel like I feel like you're totally right there. Like, if it, you look at the first five guys – and it's kind of hard to take any of those guys out of the rotation. You can use Gore in a way to piggyback behind with Martinez and stuff. You also already have two long relievers in the bullpen, in Craig Salmon and Nabil Chrismat. Um, I think that you might see Salmon DFA. That's a whole other discussion, though. But you, I think you might. Like, I don't know. I don't think they really are planning on doing that right now. I think it makes more sense that – I think I would expect them more likely to send Gore down for at least – a couple weeks right but you bring this up you bring up like it's such a hard decision like what are they going to do i kind of wonder if gorse forced them into trying the six-man rotation maybe he goes down to the minors for a couple weeks to save his arm a little bit but if you adjust to a six-man rotation and we've had this discussion so many times i wish i wish chase was here because i know chase would be a, a strong advocate of it but is there a chance that mckenzie gore has forced the padres to try a six-man rotation when he's on this team with Blake Snell as well? So me, normally, I am opposed to the six-man rotation. Normally, I am. You have six horses now. You got many horses down there that you could roll with any day of the week and feel confident in them. And that's kind of what Bob Melvin has said. When they asked him about it, they said, you know, how do you feel about the six-man rotation? And he goes, well, shoot. I mean, I'm kind of forced to do it right now because everyone's pitching so good. Who am I going to take out? And it helps some of these guys. Remember, Darvish is getting up there in age. He he got hurt last year because, I mean, he was kind of pitching a lot. He was pitching a lot of innings. He was really the only re- – him and Musgrove were really the only reliable pitchers for the first couple months of the, of the Padres season. Um, having Darvish throw less innings might help him out for the latter half of the season where – and Darvish is pitching some fantastic baseball right now. Yesterday, he kind of got screwed because of a fly ball, but Darvish is pitching great. Outside of that giant start, he's been pitching really good. Um, Manaya pitching really good. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I don't know. <sighs> Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, what was I going to say about McKenzie? Oh, going back to the six-man rotation. Um, they're all pitching good, and when it when – it comes time, I think we will see the five-man rotation come back just because Bob Melvin doesn't like the six-man rotation either. He has said that. But I think when we see these stretch, – I've mentioned it before. When we see these stretches of games where it's like 14 in a row, we're going to see a six-man rotation. I think that's inevitable because, like, having the pitch every fifth day for three straight weeks, is that's gruesome. That sucks. So um, the six-man rotation during that time span would be great, especially when they're all pitching so good. You're, you can rely on all of them. Um, but eventually we'll see that five man rotation come back. I think personally, not because, not because Mackenzie Gore is not good enough to force them to do it just because of, you know, how Bob Melvin operates now he's typically operated, how he says he operates. So with that, I think in certain situations, Mackenzie Gore has forced their hand to create the six man rotation and rock with it. And like I said, normally I'm opposed to it, but when they're all rocking like this, I'm, I'm on board, you know, for sure, because you got to get them all their innings. They all deserve to go out there. They all deserve to start and and be the pitchers that we know they can be. 
and really uh, it's just the bullpen that scares me I mean, they're all going five plus innings, which is fantastic. Last year, we saw them barely going five. Last year, it was like five ma maximum, right? You remember, it was like up until June, it, most of the time it was like five max. Um, this time around, it's like five minimum. So doing really good in that aspect. And it's really hard to take any of them out right now because they're doing so good. Hey, dude, absolutely. Last year, it was basically Darvish or Musgrove could go over five. And Snell went over five for like two weeks at the end of the year. That was it. That was it from the starting rotation. Completely different this season. Um, I think for me, I would probably like to see a six-man rotation when everyone's healthy and ready to go. And like Mackenzie Gore's not going to reach an innings limit or so, you know something along those lines. If it's not going to be that, I think piggybacking him with Clev or Snell or whoever's struggling to throw a lot of innings. Because we have to remember, Clev hasn't thrown five innings yet. He's got into the fifth inning. He hasn't finished the fifth inning in his first two starts. Do I expect him to? 100%. But he hasn't. He's coming back from an injury. Snell's coming back from an injury. Darvish is coming back from an injury and has had a lot of injury troubles and is significantly older. Who, who are the guys that you can, like, of the of the starters that you can really, really count on? Probably Manaya and Musgrove the most in terms of health. So, like, those are only two, two of your five. So, it makes sense that we're going to see McKenzie Gore start a lot of games throughout the entirety of the season. Um, and that's why I think it's it was huge that he was able to make all the adjustments in the offseason. It seems like everyone, not that everyone forgot, that I think everyone's seen that, but that was huge, guys. It's because they didn't have Snell and Clev to start the year. We didn't realize we weren't going to have Snell to start the year. And Gore's come in and he's pitched a two, under a 2 5 ERA right, in five starts. Like, that's a, it's massive. And especially when you consider some of the stretches where this offense is like non existent. And you've got quality starts out of him. So, I mean, I, I'm super pumped for the rest of his career. But I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. How should how should McKenzie Gore be used for the rest of this? I think you can go a number of different ways. But w what do you guys think the Padres are going to do? And, and what would you do if you, it was your decision for the San Diego Padres? But that's all I got for today. So thank you guys for listening. And we'll talk to you all tomorrow after the game.